What's the good word, y'all? Welcome to the New York Jazz Syndicate channel. It's your boy DKB here. So I want to quickly cover our first week of training camp and just some of the players that really stood out um, amongst their peers within that first week. And granted, this was no pads. Um, I know Robert Sala tends to kind of change a few things up uh, in terms of the activities and how things are ordered. Uh, but nonetheless, let's dive into it. So the first one will be uh, an obvious one, Quinnen Williams. He got to training camp with a new contract, uh, a, a new franchise um, player for this New York Jets team and undoubtedly the heart and soul of our defense, especially on the defensive line. And uh, he came in and dominated immediately. I mean, against the run, against the pass, we don't have a more ferocious, dynamic uh, uh, player on that unit, right? We have guys that are are great, but I don't think they can do it to the same level of Quinn and Williams. Um, and so it's nice to see that he's coming right in, especially on a line that uh, we expect to be revamped and much to improve offensively. It's nice to see that he's still coming in there and wreaking havoc. I love the stories last year about uh, him being so dominant against the run, it forced them to, to play more pass sets uh, just to get the most out of practice. So uh, leading into number two, we, of course, have probably the star of the entire training camp, Garrett Wilson. He's been the guy that has made the most plays, um, not only the consistent, you know, chain moving catches and uh, the ones that you should catch, you know, uh, uh, you know, within five yards of the line of scrimmage. But we've seen the beautiful toe tap. Uh, we've seen the 30, 40 yard plus bombs uh, that Aaron Rodgers has sent his way. And then, of course, seeing that he's picking up on these hand signals and the chemistry that he's building with Aaron Rodgers, where we're seeing and hearing a lot of those reports where he might be scanning through his progressions uh, for, you know, one or two seconds and then immediately going to uh, Garrett Wilson's direction uh, without even needing to really do much at all on the field. So I, I love everything that's going on there. Plenty of people are hyping up this uh, Devontae Adams-like connection between the two, and to be honest, it, it could be the closest thing that anybody sees to a connection like that. And probably by the end of the season, we'll be talking about them being uh, historically one of the best QB wide receiver duos uh, to ever hit the NFL. Third, I have free safety Tony Adams, our undrafted free agent from last year that beat out fifth round draft pick Jason Pinnock for a spot on the road. Also competing for a similar... Excuse me, I don't know what that was about. <laughs> but uh, Tony Adams, he's probably my favorite player of this offseason. I love a good underdog story um, where he's working himself up. He, he is essentially replacing Ashton Davis's story and doing it at a, a higher level. So he's already earned some starting free safety snaps. Granted, Adrian Amos is coming into a new system. Uh, he has to learn his defense and things, and he's quoted himself that he expects to start once he's uh, able to kind of get his feet up under him. But still, nonetheless, it, it says and speaks volumes to me that Tony Adams has been able to get enough of this coaching staff's confidence um, that they didn't go out and get another high-profile player. We did bring in a Chuck Clark, but that seemed to be me more of a, a, a whitehead replacement and then, of course, just galvanizing that safety unit, much like what we didn't see from either Whitehead or Joyner last year. Um, another guy tied in, Tyler Conklin. He's been fairly consistent. We heard some flashes very early on. Um, hasn't been tremendous, uh, you know, big plays or anything going on, but you feel really good about Tyler Conklin improving all of his statistics um, within an offense that's friendly to tight ends. But not only that, knowing Aaron Rodgers' history with his tight ends and being able to uh, make them some of the best of the best and turn nobodies uh, into some great role players or all around players. So I get really excited with him, especially since he has the better all around receiving ability compared to his counterparts, at least right now. We'll see if Jeremy Rucker truly ends up being the dark horse within that position group. But uh uh, hearing at this point that we haven't seen a case of the drops like we saw last year from a guy like Tyler Conklin, I think is a huge plus sign for us, uh, especially since he's already been, you know, one of our best tight ends uh, that we've been able to come across in, you know, a decade plus. Uh, and then finally, I have another undrafted free agent. We have wide receiver Jason Brownlee, who uh, made a lot of plays during OTAs, and he's been the receiver to stand out the most during the first week of training camp 
which says a lot. Now, I'm expecting a little bit more even so when he puts on uh, the pads because uh, he's a guy that's going to be one of the more physical players out of that undrafted free agent group. And he's making a great case for himself so far if we want to keep six wide receivers to be that option uh, that we, you know, before the Denzel Mims trade knew of uh, as being his replacement. So I'm excited for him, his ability to go out there and high point the ball, how he dominated collegiately, um, a huge jump ball defender, uses his entire catch radius. He's just kind of fun to see so far. So I'm hoping he really does keep it up. Uh, but those are my five players. Let me know if you guys agree uh, or if you have some other players that you believe should be in the top five. Definitely plenty of people that uh, we can go on to talk about. But looking forward to it and I'll catch you guys again. Peace.